This is the Edexcel Higher Tier Paper 2 from November 2022. Question 1. The scatter graph shows information about the amount of rainfall in millimetres and the number of hours of sunshine for each of 10 English towns on the same day. One of the points is an outlier. Write down the coordinates of this point. So the outlier is the one that doesn't fit with the rest of them. So if I had a line of best fit, it would look something like this. And the outlier is the one that's a long way away from the line of best fit. So which point isn't close to the correlation to the line of best fit? It's this one. And the coordinates are 2, 1. Ignoring the outlier, Describe the relationship between the amount of rainfall and the number of hours of sunshine. So as the rainfall increases, the sunshine decreases. It's a negative correlation. As one goes up, the other one goes down. So as rainfall increases, sunshine decreases. And we could have just put negative correlation. So either of these, either as the amount of rainfall increases, the number of hours of sunshine decreases, or you can just write negative correlation and you get the mark for that as well. On the same day in another English town, there were seven hours of sunshine. Using the scatter graph, estimate the amount of rainfall in this town on that day. So this is where we need a line of best fit. So your line of best fit will go roughly through the middle of the points. You're going to have five on one side and four on the other. And it'll just be somewhere there. Your line of best fit won't be exactly the same as mine, but it will be roughly the same. And there's a range of acceptable answers. So we've got seven hours of sunshine. So we're going to 7 on sunshine, which is halfway between 6 and 8. And then down to our rainfall. And I have, that looks like 3.2 or 3.3. I put 3.2. Anything between 3 and 4 would be acceptable here. Question two, the front elevation and the plan. So the front elevation is from the front. The plan is the view from above. They're shown on the grid. And we need to draw the side elevation from the side that the arrow is pointing. So we can see from the plan, it's three wide. And from the front elevation, we can see it's five tall. So we want three wide and five tall. And then I'm just going to draw in these extra lines for the slopes. So looking at it from this way, we can see the where the slope starts and ends. So that's one up and three up. So I'll put those extra lines in. And that is our side elevation. Here are the first five terms of an arithmetic sequence. Find the nth term for the sequence. So we can see it's going up in sixes. It's the six times table, it's 6n. So 6n, the six times table is 6, 12, 18, 24, 30. Our sequence isn't exactly the same as that. It's one more than it. It's always one more than the six times table. The six times table plus one. The nth term of a different sequence is eight minus six n. Is 58 a term of the sequence? So let's turn this into an equation. Eight minus six n equals negative 58. And then if we solve it, and n is a whole number, that means it is in the sequence. It will be that term. Because if negative 58 is in the sequence, there'll be a number we can substitute in for n that will make 
negative 58. So that's either plus the 6 to both sides. I'm going to plus the 6. I'd like it to be positive. So I've got negative 58 plus 6n or 6n minus 58. Then plus 58 to both sides. So we have 66 equals 6n. So n must be 11. 6 times 11 is 66. So n is 11. So it is in the sequence. It's the 11th term. If we make n 11, we get negative 58. It's the 11th term of the sequence. Question 4. The diagram shows a plan of Jason's garden. A, B, C, O. And D, E, F, O are rectangles. We can see from the diagram. C, D, O is a right angle triangle. And A, F, O is a sector of the circle. Center, O. And it's a 90 degree angle, so it's a quarter circle. Jason's going to cover the garden with grass seed. Each bag of grass seed covers 14 meters squared and costs £10.95. So we need to know the area of the garden. So 9 times 7 is 63. 11 times 7 is 77. And then we've got a triangle. We can use the calculator, to remember. So it's 11 along 9, so it's half times base times height. Half times 11 times 9, which is 49 and a half. 49.5. And then we've got a quarter circle. The area of a whole circle is pi r squared. And the radius is 7. So it's pi times 7 squared. That's the whole circle. But we've got a quarter, so I'm going to divide it by 4. So pi times 7 squared over 4 is 49 over 4 pi. So then the total area is all of these added together. So 49 over 4 pi, 49.5, 77 and 63. So we've got 227.98. That's the total area of the garden. Each bag of grass seed is 14 metres squared. So divide by 14. So we've got 16.28. So I need 16.28 bags. I can't buy, I can't go to the shop and buy 16.28 bags. So I'm going to have to buy 17 bags. Each costs £10.95. So 17 times £10.95 is £186.15p. Question 5. So we've got a right angle triangle. So it's Pythagoras or Sokotoa. We don't know two of the lengths. We can't use Pythagoras. And we've got an angle in the question. It must be Sokotoa. Find the value of x. So we've got the hypotenuse, the longest side, opposite the right angle. And we've got the adjacent, which is in between the angle and the right angle. We don't know the opposite. And we're not trying to work it out. So it's not in the question. So it's not so, can't have the O in it. It is ka, it's not toa. So it's ka, A and H. Ka means cos with the angle is equal to A divided by H. So let's change the angle into 53, A into X, and H into 14.5. So cos 53 equals X over 14.5. I want x by itself. To get rid of a divide by 14.5, I multiply by 14.5. So x is going to be equal 
to 14.5 times cos 53. And we can just type it into the calculator. And we get 8.73 to three significant figures. Ella invests £7,000 for two years in an account paying compound interest. In the first year, the rate of interest is 3%. In the second year, 1.5%. Work out the value of Ella's investment at the end of two years. So to add on 3% in one calculation, I want 100% plus 3%. So I want to work out what 103% is, because I want the original amount plus on 3%, so 103%. And to do that, I times by 103% as a decimal, which is 1.03. So to add on 3% times by 1.03, to add on 1.5%, again, same thing, so I want 101.5% as a decimal, 1.015. So I want to add on 3% and then add on 1.5%, so 1.015. And this calculation will give me the answer. So it's £7,000, add on 3%, then add on 1.5%. And we get £7,318.15p. Question 7. Here is the graph of y equals x squared minus 6x plus 4. So a quadratic graph. Write down the y-intercept for the first question of the graph. So the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis, it's at 4. The turning point for the second one is where it turns, it's this bit at the bottom, where it stops going down and starts going up. What are the coordinates? 3, negative 5. And part C, we want the roots of x squared minus 6x plus 4 equals 0. So it equals zero, that's where it touches the, where it crosses the x-axis. So that's where it crosses the x-axis, that's the roots. They are the roots, so it's here and here. It's 0 0.8 and 5.2. Question eight. Chanda buys a necklace for 120 pounds. She sells it for 135 pounds work out her percentage profit. So percentage profit, we want the, the change or the profit divided by the original amount times 100. So change over original times 100. What's the profit? What's the change? How much has it gone up by? It's gone up by 15 pounds over the original, which was 120, then times 100. So 15 over 120 times 100 and it's 12 and a half so 12.5 percent question nine here are the equations of two straight lines oscar says they're parallel is oscar correct so if they're parallel they've got to have the same gradient so do they have the same gradient well if they're in the form y equals mx plus c M is the gradient. So the first line has got a gradient of a half. It's in the form y equals mx plus c. But the second line isn't. So let's put it in that form, make it y equals by dividing every term by 6. So divide through by 6. So y equals 3 over 6x plus 7 over 6. And 3 over 6 is the same as a half. 
So they've got the same gradient. They've both got the gradient of a half. So yes, both gradients are the same. And we have to, to get those marks, you would have to have shown that the gradient is a half for the second line. Aliyah bought a car in the first year after she bought the car. Its value depreciated by 23%. In the second year, 19%. At the end of the second year, it's worth £10,914.75. Very precise. What was the value of the car when Aliyah bought it? So this is the same as the compound interest question. It's just that we're working backwards. So if you're taking 23% off, that's 100%. Take away 23%, which would leave you with 77%. And if you're taking 19% off, 100 take away 19 is 81. So to take off 23% in one calculation, you times by 0 0.77. To take off 19% times by 0 0.81. So for this one, we had an original amount that we don't know. It was then times by 0 0.77. Then it was multiplied by 0 0.81. And it equaled £10,914.75, which was the car's exact value. So... We want x by itself. At the moment, it's multiplied by these. To get rid of them, we divide by them. So we've got £10,914.75 divided by these two. And if you multiply them first, it doesn't make a difference. So you can either multiply them first or leave them there and do it in one go. So we've got 10900 and £14.75 divided by 0 0.77 times 0 0.81 and it was £17,500. Question 11. In an experiment, 60 students each completed a puzzle. The cumulative frequency graph shows information about the times taken for the 60 students to complete the puzzle. For these 60 students, the least time was 24 seconds, greatest 96, and we need to draw a box plot. So in a box plot, we have five lines, like this, and a box in the middle, and two whiskers going out. So we want the lowest time, which we know is 24 seconds, the greatest time, which we know is 96. And then we need to know the median time. So for 60 students, it'd be the middle one. That'd be the 30th. The lower quartile, that'd be the 15th student's time. And the upper quartile, which would be three quarters, the 45th. So the 30th, 15th, and then the first and the 60th. So let's just work these out. We've got the cumulative frequency diagram, graph. So the median, we want to go from 30 along to the line and down. We want 15 for the lower quartile, so along and down. And 45 for the upper quartile. like so let's just read these off so we've got it's going up in twos every time that would be 42 64 which one's 50 and 54 so we can just draw the lines on, so 24, to 
42. 54. 64. And 96. We've got the whiskers going out and the box in the middle. And so that is our box plot. In the exam paper, the box plot will be beneath the cumulative frequency diagram and it will line up. So they've got the same scale. So you'll be able to follow this 42 line all the way down and it'll be in the same place on the box plot. Question 12, the number of insects in a population at the start of the year N is PN. The number of insects in the population at in year N plus one is PN plus one. So that's just the notation where PN plus one is K times PN. So the population one year times a number is the population next year. And it even tells us K is a constant value of 1.13. So the population next year is 1.13 times the population this year. And all this is, it's a fancy way of saying it's increasing by 13% a year. Because if we times by 1.13, we add 13% on. So every year it goes up by 13%. Find out how many years it takes for the number of insects in the population to double. You must show how you get your answer. So how many years does it take to double? If the initial population, so let's say, let the initial population, I mean, I could make it one, I could, I'm going to make it 100. So let's say it's 100. How many years, how many times do we have to times by 1.13 to make it double? So how many years, how many times do we have to times by 1.13? So if I times by 1.13 once, I could use a calculator here, but I'm going to get 113. If I times by 1.13, say four times, so to the power of four, 100 times 1.13 to the power of four, I would get 163. So it hasn't doubled. How about six times? And it has doubled, 208. I better check that it hasn't doubled at five times. Well, I need to check, 184. So how long does it take? It takes six years. Increasing by 13% a year, it takes six years for it to double. And it doesn't matter what the initial population was. I didn't actually have to use anything. I could have just done 1.13 to the power of 5 isn't doubled. And 1.13 to the power of 6 is doubled. So it's really irrelevant what your starting number is. What matters is whether this number gets over 2. The 1.13 to the power of what is over 2. The value of k actually increases year on year from its value of 1.13 in year 1. How does this affect your answer to part A? So if the increase, if the percent we're increasing by goes up, it would take less time. So it might have doubled at 5 years or 4 years. We don't know exactly. So it would take less time. Less time to double. A and B are points on a centimeter grid. A is the point with coordinates negative seven, six. Negative seven, six. B is the point with coordinates eight, negative five. Let's put it here, eight, negative five. Work out the length of AB. So this is a sneaky Pythagoras question. So we want to know the length of that straight line. But it's actually 
if we look at the changes in the x and the changes in the y's, we've actually got a right angle triangle. So from negative 7 to 8, along the x-axis, we've moved 15. And from 6 to negative 5, on the y-axis, we've gone down 11. And we want to know how long that line is. So let's use Pythagoras. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The two short sides squared and added together equal the long side squared. 11 squared plus 15 squared is 346. That's equal to x squared. To get x by itself, square root the answer, which is square root 346, also known as 18.6. Question 14. Using algebra, prove that 1.062 recurring can be written as one whole one and 14 over 225. So we could ignore the one here because they've both got a one in them. I'm just going to keep it. So I'm going to say 1.062 recurring. I'm going to call that x. Now I'm looking for things that end in 2 recurring. So if I times by 100, I'm going to get 106.2 recurring as 100x. And if I times by 10 again, so actually times the original by 1,000, I'll have 1,062.2 recurring is 1,000x's. It's really important that we keep our recurring notation going. Alternative, alternatively, we could write 22222. Two, 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 two. I'd write 106.222 two, two, with some dots on the end. Now I've got two things that end in two recurring. I'm going to take them away. I've got 1,000 x's, take away 100 x's, bottom take away top, which is going to be 900 x's. And I've got 1,062.2 recurring, take away 106. Now the two recurrings on both of them cancel out. 22222, take away 22222 is nothing. So I've just got 1,062, take away 106, which is 956. So then to get x by itself, divide both sides by 900. So 956 over 900, which is 239 over 225. And that's one whole one. And then we've got 14 left out of 225. Question 15, phaser is studying the population of rabbits in a park. She wants to estimate the number of rabbits in the park. On Monday, she catches a random sample of 20 rabbits in the park, marks each rabbit with a tag, and releases them back into the park. On Tuesday, she catches 42 rabbits. 12 of them are marked with a tag. Find an estimate for the number of rabbits in the park. So 20 rabbits have got a tag on them. So 20 out of the total number of rabbits have a tag. Now that should be the same fraction as the number she catches the second day. So that's 12 out of 42. So the fraction on the first day should be the same as the fraction on the second day. So what is x? What does x have to be? So I could times by x times by 42. Or I could simplify this fraction. So I could say half top, half bottom. And then divide top by 3. Divide bottom by 3. So I've got 2 sevenths. 
So 20 over x is the same as 2 over 7. And then what if I times top and bottom by 10? x must be 70. So x must be 70. I could have also said, let's put a box around this. I could have also said 20 out of 70 equals, no, 20 out of x equals 12 out of 42 times by 42 times by x and divide by 12. So 20 times 42 over 12 equals x and that will give us 7. So 20 times 42 over 12, 70. That will give us 70, the same answer. Albie is studying the population of rabbits in the wood, so not the park, the wood. One day he catches 55 rabbits and finds that 40 of these rabbits are marked with a tag. Albie estimate, estimates there are 50 rabbits in the wood. Explain why Albie's estimate cannot be correct. We caught 55 rabbits and he's estimated there are 50 rabbits in the wood. Um, he caught more than 50. The shaded region shown on the grid is bounded by four straight lines. Find the four inequalities that define the shaded region. So what are the equations of these straight lines? Let's work them out. So we've got y equals 6. So this one's called y equals 6. That's the, that's the line's name. We've got x equals negative 3. Then we've got this line with a y-intercept at 1. For every 1 it goes across, it goes down by a half. Across 1, down half. Across 1, down half. So it's got a gradient of minus a half. Every 1 it goes across, it goes down a half. That means the gradient is minus a half. So minus a half x plus 1, the y-intercept. y equals mx plus c. Then this one has got a y-intercept of 6, but every 1 it goes across, it goes up 3. Across 1, up 3. So it's y equals 3x plus 6. But we want inequalities, we don't want straight lines. So for y equals 6, we want beneath the line. So that means y has got to be less than and because it's a solid line, it can also be equal. So y is less than or equal to 6. For x equals negative 3, we're going to the right of the line. That means x is bigger. x gets bigger as we go right. So x is bigger or equal again, solid line, to negative 3. For y equals minus a half x plus 1. We want above the line again. So where y is bigger, y goes bigger as we get up. So y is bigger or equal to minus a half x plus 1. And y equals 3x plus 6. Again, above the line we want. So y is bigger as we go up, y is bigger than or equal to 3x plus 6. So we can pick a point inside the shaded region and check that all of these work for that point. So a point in the middle, let's have negative 2, 4. So x is negative 2, y is 4. Does it work for all of these? So 4 is less than 6. That's true. Negative 2 is bigger than negative 3. That's true. 4 is bigger than minus a half times minus 2, which is 1, plus 1 is 2. So 4 is bigger than 2. That's true. And 4 is bigger than 3 negative 2, so negative 6 plus 6, 0. 4 is bigger than 0. That's true as well. Question 17, the diagram shows two similar 
So one's an enlargement of the other one. Solid triangular prisms A and B. The volume of A and the volume of B are given. So we can find the scale factor for volume. So let's do that straight away. So 58.806 times the scale factor for volume equals 1587.762. When I divide these, it's probably going to give me a nice number. Let's have a look. So 1587.762 over 58.806 is 27. So the scale factor for volume is 27. When we have scale factors for length, area, and volume, so we have scale factor for length, and then scale factor for area is the scale factor squared, and the scale factor for volume is the scale factor cubed. So if the scale factor for volume is 27, the cube root of 27 is 3, so the scale factor for length is 3, and if I squared that, so the scale factor for scale factor squared, the scale factor for area is nine. So they're the scale factors we need. What's the question? So we've got a right angled triangle as the cross section. For prism B, the length of the base is 8.1, the area is 43.74. The height of A is H, work out the value of H. Okay, so we can work out this missing length here. So H for B, the area is half base times height. So half, that's it says an eighth, half times H times 8.1 is 43.74. So to find H of B, 43.74 divided by a half and divided by 8.1 is 10.8. So the height for B is 10.8. So to go this way, for length, we times by 3. So to go back, divide by 3. So the height of A is 10.8 over 3. which is 3.6. Here is a triangle, question 18. Work out the area of the triangle. So the area of a, any triangle can be found using half AB sine C. So C is the angle, that's big C. That means opposite it is little c, and these two are A and B. So it's half, a, B, sine, C. So just type it into the calculator and we get 21.3. Two, three significant figures. 19 solve. We've got a calculator. It's probably going to be a quadratic formula. We might be able to factorize it. I'm not sure. We could have a go. Or we could just go straight to the quadratic formula. Either way. So we could just say A is 6, B is 5, C is negative 6. Let's use the quadratic formula and if we get whole number answers, we know we could have factorized it, and then I'll show you the other method as well, if we can. So the quadratic formula says minus b, x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So substituting in numbers, we've got minus 5 plus or minus 5 squared minus 4 times 6 times negative 6 
all over two sixes. So that's negative five plus the square root of five squared. I'm just using plus the first time, and I'll go back in and change it to a minus to get my second answer. So just substituting, writing that in, writing what I've, I've writing the substituted one into the calculator. So I've got two thirds as my first answer. And for my second answer, I'm going to change that plus into a minus. And I get negative 3 over 2. So that means I could have factorized it because I've got fractions. So let's do that as well. So I'm going to do a times c. 6 times negative 6 is negative 36. So what multiplies to make 36? 136, 2 18s. 3 12s, 4 9s, 6 6s. Which of those can give me a 5? It's going to have to be the 4 and the 9. So I'm going to rewrite it as 6x squared. I want plus 5x. So I'm going to have plus 9 take away 4. So I've rewritten 5x as 9x take away 4x. So now I've got four terms, just like you get when you expand the quadratic. So now I'm ready to factorize it, to put it into brackets. What comes out of the first two terms? 6x squared and 9x, they've both got a 3 in them and an x. So 3x must be my first term. 3x times something is 6x squared. That's 2x. 3x times something is 9x, that's 3. Something times 2x is negative 4x, that's negative 2. And negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. So x is equal to 2 thirds, or x is equal to negative 3 over 2. Question 20. A, B, C, D, E, F, G is a cuboid. A to D is 9 centimetres. F to D is 13. Angle GHF is 49. GHF. Okay, so we need a line here. 49. Work out the size of angle FAH. FAH. That looks a bit confusing. Probably change the color. Not sure that helps. So we want FAH, so we can work out AF using AFD, the AFD right angle triangle. A to D is 9, F to D is 13. So Pythagoras says AF squared plus 9 squared equals 13 squared, so 13 13 squared take away 9 squared will be AF squared, which is 88 so AF squared is 88 so let's call AF just square root 88 so that means we've got AF now. We will be able to work out 
FH. We know AD is 9, which means GH would also be 9 because it's a cuboid. So we've got a GFH right angle triangle. And G to H is 9. We've got a 49 degrees. And we want FH. So it's a Sokotoa question. We've got the hypotenuse and the adjacent. So it's cos. So cos 49 is 9 over x times by x. Divide by cos 49. So x is 9 over cos 49. 9 over cos 49 is, I need to close the bracket after my 49 degrees, 13.7. So now we can use the AFH right angle triangle. That's the one we want. A, F, H, we've got 13.7, we've got X up here, and we've got square root 88. So we've got the opposite and the adjacent now, not the hypotenuse. So it's not so or ka, it must be toa. So tan X is O over A, oa. 13.7 over square root 88. 13.7 is the answer in my calculator at the moment. So I'm going to use that. So I've got, let's do it in one step. So to get x by itself, the opposite of tan is arc tan, shift tan. So it's going to be tan minus 1. Arc tan, 13.7 over square root 88 and let's just type it in the calculator so shift tan answer over root 88 equals 55.6 to the nearest degree 56 56 degrees question 21 the graph below gives the volume in litres of water in a container t seconds after the water starts to fill the container. Calculate an estimate for the gradient of the graph when t equals 17.5. You must show how you get your answer. So we want the gradient at this point. So how steep is it at this point when t is 17.5? It's a curve. So to find the gradient, we need to draw a tangent. So if we draw a tangent, I'm going to move that line. So it's just touching. It's just touching at that point at 17.5. And then I can work out the gradient of the straight line using the change in y over the change in x. So the gradient is the change in the y's divided by the change in the x's. So let's find two points on this line, on the straight line. So I've got 25, 17.5 here. And let's go here. I've got, so it's going up each, Two is one, so that's three, it's ten three. So I've got two points, and I can just do the change in y divided by the change in x. So I've got 17.5 minus three, so it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And let's call these x1, y1, x2, y2. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So 17.5 minus 3. We can just use a calculator here. So that would be 14.5 over 15 
I could leave it like that. I prefer if I'm leaving it as a fraction to double the top and double the bottom just so I've got whole numbers. So I'm going to write 29 over 30. I could get a decimal using the calculator, but a fraction is absolutely fine. And again, there'll be a range of acceptable answers for this question. As long as you've drawn a tangent at that point, you should be okay. Describe fully what the gradient in part A represents. So the gradient is the change in y over the change in x, so the change in volume over time. So it's the change in volume per second. So the change in volume per second. For every one second, that's how much the volume changes at that point. Question 22. f of x is cube root x, g of x is 2x plus 3, h of x is equal to f g of x. Find the inverse of h, the inverse of the h function. So we need to... Well, there's a few ways of doing it, actually. We could draw this out as a function diagram. So as f gx, that means we do g first and then f. So our g function is times by 2 and then plus 3. So x is the input. It gets multiplied by 2 and then we add 3 to it. So it's a times by 2 and then a plus 3 function. That's our g function. You put something in for x, it gets doubled, and then you add 3. And then if you put that into f, that means you're then going to cube root it. So then the next one would be cube root. So f g of x is times by 2 plus 3, and then cube root. So that's the input, and that's the output. So that's the function. That's the, the h function. That's what it does. It times it by 2, plus it's 3, and cube roots. The opposite of the h function is going to turn the output into the input. It goes backwards. So it's going to do the opposite of cube rooting, which is cubing. So we're going to cube the opposite of plusing 3, taking away 3, and then the opposite of timesing by 2, dividing by 2. So that is our answer. Cube root x, no cube x, then take away 3 and divide by 2. If we weren't using a function diagram, we'd be, we'd be using the algebra. So f g of x, f g x is putting the g function into the f function. So it's the g function, 2x plus 3, in for x the cube root of 2x plus 3. And then, so that's hx. Let's write h there instead. That's our h function. We want the inverse of the h function, the function that does the opposite thing to the h function. So we want to undo it. We want the input to become the output, the output to become the input. So this is going to be our x. That's our... This is our output, it becomes our input. And I'm just going to write y in over here. And now I need to make y the subject. So cube both sides. Take away 3 from both sides. And divide by 2. So that is our inverse function. Question 23 bounds. So a race is measured to have a distance of 10.6 kilometers, correct to the nearest 0 0.1. So it's 10.6. The next one up is 10.7. The one down is 10.5. So the lower bound is 10.55. The upper bound is 10.65. 
Sam runs the race in 31 minutes, 48 seconds. Correct the nearest second. 31 minutes, 48 seconds. So the next one up, 31, 49, 31, 47. So the bounds, 31 minutes, 47 and a half seconds. 31 minutes, 48 and a half seconds. So that's the upper bound and the lower bound. Sam's average speed is V. Calculate V to a suitable degree of accuracy. So speed is distance divided by time. Kilometers per hour. So we have to change these into hours. That is kilometers already. So we want the upper bound for speed, which is going to be the upper distance. That's distance, that's time. Upper distance. And if you want a big answer, you want to divide by the smaller number. So the upper bound is the upper distance divided by lower time. And the lower bound for V is the lower distance over the upper time. So we just need to change these into hours. Zero hours. 31 minutes. 47.5 seconds. Type it in the calculator. And then press S to D and change it into hours. So that's 0 0.52986 and so on. I'm going to store it as A. And I'll write down 763 over 1440, 763, 763 over 1440 in hours. And then the same for the second one. So zero hours, 31 minutes, 48.5 seconds. So 3817 over 7,200. Store it as B though, just so I've got it. 383817. 3817 over 7200. So then we can just work these out. So upper V, the upper bound for V is the upper bound for distance, 10.65. Divided by the lower bound for time. That's the one I saved as A. I just put 763 over 1440. In the calculator, I'm going to use A. So 10.65 over A. And that's 20.0. Nine nine. I don't think I'm going to need more than that. Decimal places. The next one's a six. I'll just write it in. The lower bound for V is ten point five five over three eight one seven over seven two zero zero. So that's ten point five five over the one I saved as B. which is 19.900. So what is V to a suitable degree of accuracy? So they both round to 20 to two significant figures. So they both round to 20 to two significant figures. So 20 to two significant figures, both bounds round to 20 to two significant figures. So we don't do one significant figure because they both round to 20 to two significant figures, but the three significant figures will have 20.1 
and 19.9. Question 24. A circle has equation x squared plus y squared equals 12.25. The point P lies on the circle. The coordinates of P are 2.12.8. L is a tangent at P. Find an equation for L. So we've got a circle. Goes through the origin. No, the center is at the origin. We've got a point 2.1, 2.8 on the circle. And there's a tangent at that point. And we need to know the equation of that tangent. So we're using the circle theorem. The radius and the tangent meet at a 90 degree angle. And we know this is 0, 0. We know this is 2.1, 2.8. So we can find the gradient of the radius and then the gradient of the tangent. It's a 90 degree angle. They're perpendicular lines. It's a negative reciprocal. So the gradient of the tangent is a negative reciprocal of the gradient of the radius. So the gradient of the radius. So it's the change in the y's over the change in x's. So 2.8 minus 0 over 2.1 minus 0. So that's going to simplify to 4 thirds because 28 and 21 are both in the 7 times table. I can put it in the calculator like that. 4 thirds. That's the gradient of the radius. So the gradient of the tangent is a negative reciprocal. So flip a minus so negative, four thirds flipped over, three quarters. So the gradient of the tangent is negative three quarters. So it's going to be y equals minus three quarters x plus c. C is this one up here. We don't know what it is, but we can work it out using the coordinates. We know it goes through 2.1, 2.8. So x is 2.1 y is 2.8. So 2.8 equals negative 3 quarters times 2.1 plus c. So 2.1 times negative 3 quarters is negative 63 over 40. So to get C by itself, add 63 over 40 to both sides. 2.8 plus 63 over 40, 35 over 8. C is 35 over 8. So the equation of the tangent, oh, it needs to be in a certain form. I thought I'd finished. So we've got minus 3 quarters X plus 35 over 8. But we want it in a form where A, B, and C are integers. So we need to multiply everything by 8 to get rid of the fractions. So I'm going to get 8y minus 3 quarters, 8 times negative 3 quarters. Eight times negative three quarters is negative six plus thirty-five. So I've got eight y equals negative six x plus thirty-five. I want a plus six x to both sides, so six x plus eight y equals thirty-five, and that is the answer in the form we wanted.